Travis, and praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We're blessed this morning. Amen. To have this privilege. Amen. My wife and I were... Of that thing, amen. To be here today, thank God. I'm gonna talk a little bit about worship this morning, amen. Thank you, <laughs> amen. I was, I had another thought I was thought about this morning, but then the Lord changed my mind Friday, and uh, so we're going to be talking about worship, amen, and uh. He's worthy to be worshipped. Amen. Worthy. Amen. There's nothing like Jesus Christ. Hey, satisfy you. Not working. Oh. Okay. Anyway. We're blessed. We'll get it right here in a minute. <laughs> Amen. I was thinking this morning about some things that uh, I've gone through with, and I thought, here I am. I made it to be 79 years old. Amen. So I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm thankful. Amen. I thought, you know, I thought, who am I that a king would bleed and die for. Amen. You know, who am I? That he over him. Knows me. Yeah. So why shouldn't I worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Amen. I hope and pray that you will get something out of this as I was uh Okay. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, um, it seems like the enemy is trying to uh, get rid of you, but thus far, God has kept his hand up on me. Amen. And uh, so I'm chose. I thought, well, and I think about the, the promise that he gave me in Jeremiah 29, 11, and uh, I'm often sometimes reminded of that when somebody on the radio mentions that scripture. Or if I might read it someplace, you know, that God, amen, uh, has given me an expected end. And uh, some things have happened, but nevertheless, I'm still here. Amen. It's been several times from my, even when I was born, that the enemy tried to get rid of me. But God has kept me thus far. So by the grace of God, I'm going to make it home. Amen. A song says, Amazing grace has won the race. If I make it, it'll be by the grace of God. Amen. Now, I've got these reading glasses on, so you're all going to look a little blurry to me. Amen. But i got to have them to read a little bit. Thank God. Amen. Uh, it says, uh, must worship him in spirit and in truth. The English word worship was originally spelled worship. Worship, W-R-T-H-S-H-I-P. And means to acknowledge the one worthy of worship. And Jesus is worthy for us to worship. Amen. He's the creator of all things. He's the one that gives you your very breath. Amen. He's the one that gives you another day. He's the one, amen, that allows you, amen, to go to work or whatever. Praise God. So we're going to be talking about this one that, amen, that uh, allows us, amen, to worship him. In St. John uh, chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 21. St. John, chapter 4, verse 21. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, 
Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what, uh, you know, no, you worship, you know not what we know, what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so I thought, you know, it's why Jesus said, you must be born again. Amen. Of the water and of the spirit. Thank God. So I want you to know, uh, when we get baptized in Jesus' name, and God fills with the Holy Ghost, that we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Brother Henry, I want you to know this is the best plan God has. Amen. There's no other plan. I told a man years ago, I was working with him. He said, I'm going to convert you. And I said, yeah, when you do, I'll be lost forever. If I don't believe this gospel, I'll be lost. Amen. Well, I don't want to be lost. The reason I'm in this church, I don't want to be lost. The reason I'm in this church. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be lost when Jesus comes. Amen. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. I thought about some things, and I thought here in uh, St. Luke chapter 19, if you give me St. Luke chapter 19, verse 33. Amen. I'm going to take these off. And they said, and they were loosing the colt. The owner thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? Next verse, please. And they said, The Lord had need of him. Amen. So that was all right. That's all he had to say. The Lord needed him. Amen. Let's just keep going down, brother. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come, nigh even now at the descension of the mountain of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all <coughs> the mighty works that he, they had seen. And saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered, said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Amen. Because the king of kings had entered the city, and somebody or something was going to worship him. Amen. Because it was prophesied, and it had to be fulfilled. And he said, you know, if these, if these folks keep, keep their mouths shut, them stones are going to say, praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, let everything have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. <coughs> so I want you to know, thank God, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted. Amen. And thank God when we even come to the house of the Lord to worship and magnify him, lift up that precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The one that cared the, um, so much for us that he died on Calvary, that you and I can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. He desires. He doesn't want anybody to be lost. Amen. That's why he died so you and I can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. He didn't die on Calvary so folks could be lost. He died so folks could be saved. It's their choice. God gives us a choice every day. Amen. We can worship him. Amen. And we can live for him or we can do our own thing and leave eternity in a lake of fire. Now, I don't want to go to hell. Amen. And I never, I, I never ever want to go there. I thought, you know, I feel sorry for folks that once get in this truth, and leave it, you know. 
I thought about old David this morning. You know, uh, when uh, Saul had messed up being king and, and, uh, and God told Samuel, he said, I found me a man after my own heart. Amen. I thought about David. Now, the scripture doesn't say this, but David was on the backside of the desert taking care of a bunch of old sheep. Amen. And he worshiped God. He wrote psalms. Amen. He played his music. He washed over those sheep. Amen. Like they were people. He protected them. They were his sheep. He was watching. Amen. And so then when the lion uh, came after that lamb, David killed the lion. And when, the, when uh, the bear came after the lamb, David didn't risk his own life to kill that bear. Amen. And I thought when he came to Goliath, he thought, well, he's going to be just like with them bear and lion. Amen. They were, he was to found the army of the living God. Amen. And somebody amen, had to take him and uh, uh, stand, you know. And so David... When he saw that giant, he ran after him. He didn't just walk, amen, afraid of whatever. He had that old slingshot, woo, going around, woo, 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 and let go in God's direction, hit that, uh, hit that giant, amen, and it knocked him out. David cut his head off, amen, and then uh, when they needed a king, God said, I found me a man after my own heart. Amen. I thought David loved the Lord. He worshiped. Amen. I thought when the Ark of the Covenant, amen, was taken, and Obinadam was uh, having a uh, blessing from God because of the Ark, amen, David said, I got to bring that thing home. Amen. And I thought, you know, him being the king, him being the king, amen, he, uh, <laughs> He worshiped God. He was showing those Levites and them, amen, uh, what to do. They got that ark, and they bring it in every six paces. David worshiped the Lord. Woo! Amen. And I, I thought, you know, the thought crossed my mind sometimes. I thought, those Levites probably said, man, we'll never get there with his ark if he keeps that up. But he did. Amen. He worshiped the Lord. Amen. He exalted him. Thank God. And I want you to know, I thought, you know, here he was. He, he was just praising the Lord, you know, because he is bringing the ark back home. Thank God. I thought when the Israelites took it, uh, when they were in battle, amen, they took it to, to where they were having a battle at, and they thought, oh, God's going to deliver us. Wrong. They had a wrong motive, the wrong attitude. But David didn't. David had a right attitude, the right motive. Amen. And the Bible says, thank God, he worshiped. Ever six pays, he stopped. Amen. He offered up a sacrifice. Amen. And finally, they got to Jerusalem. And his wife, amen, looked out the window. Thought, what's that old fool doing down there? He was, he was just dancing, carrying on. I mean, he got so excited, amen, that he got, uh, that he gave me his, his clothes rose up, you know, and they saw what was his undergarments and all that, you know. Amen. And his wife said, oh, look at the king. He showed himself today. And he said, you know what? You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I'm going to get more vile than that. Amen. Because God, amen, delivered him, chose him. Amen. Because he was a worshiper of God. Amen. There's a lot of things here in in the book of Psalms, you can tell, amen, about the things of how he worshiped God and how he magnified the Lord. I want to go to Psalm uh, 100, please. Psalms 100. Ooh, hallelujah. I feel good. I feel good. Just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. Hallelujah. I feel good. <laughs> amen. A psalm of praise, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the, that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. 
Amen. And bless his name. Oh, hallelujah. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Amen. How true that is. I thought, you know, when I first got in church, sometimes we had a, a church at 18th and Greenup. Brother P.T. Pennington was a pastor there. And sometimes at midnight, we'd be praising the Lord. They'd call the police on us. Amen. Now, if we was carrying on, you know, and doing all other things you shouldn't be doing, they wouldn't have called, but they called the police on us. Amen. They're coming. Hey, I want to quiet us down a little bit. Amen. But, you know, uh, people don't worship like they used to. We don't come to church and, and glorify God. You know, I remember, when, you know, and my wife and I were talking about people having special songs, and then Brother Stephen Hoffer called me and said, hey, said, anytime you and your wife wants to sing, <laughs> he said, let me know. <laughs> Amen. Because I tell you what, we are here to worship and magnify God. He said, if I'll be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Thank God. You know, if we get a fire going in here, in our hearts, amen, every one of us, we worship the Lord, amen, and forget about uh, our troubles and trials and things we're going through with. You know, come to the house of God just to have our mind on one thing. That's to lift him up. Amen. Because I, when I was a teenager going to church and I saw these folks stand up and testify and worship God, I thought, oh my, I wish I could do that. Amen. Well, God has given me that opportunity to worship, testify, talk about Jesus. Amen. Let's go on, let's go on talking about this good old way. This is a good way. Amen. He said, you know, when you find it, he said, walk therein. He told those Jews. He says, search out the old path. Amen. Then when you find it, walk therein. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to have it their way. I thought, you know, here he was. He, he brought them out of the land of Egypt. But you know what? Egypt never got out of their heart. Amen. He may, their body and them may be on their way to the promised land, but their mind and heart was back in Egypt. Because they said, told Moses, you know, they were uh, uh, wanting some water. And after God had took them to the Red Sea, they saw that miracle. All they had to do was call upon him. Amen. And Moses got so upset with them people, and no doubt because of all the complaining and murmuring going on. Amen. And so he, uh, he said, must we give you water? It cost him. Amen. Moses told the Lord, said, well, you won't go. And when Moses asked him again, he said, don't ask me again. He said, you're not going, Moses. Because of all those people, you know, he heard their grumbling, growling seven days a week, all time complaining, you know. And they saw miracles after miracle after miracle. Hey, man, you think they would be a worshiper of God? You know, and, uh, and I thought about when Moses up on the mountain with uh, Joshua and in the presence of the Lord. And they said to, to Aaron, he said, uh, make us a God. We don't know about this Moses. He's been gone too long. He may not even come back. And old Aaron, you know, old weak need Aaron, he said, okay. So he made him a God. They worshiped something that could not move. Couldn't even blink their eyelids like that. Amen. And when they come off the mountain, Joshua said, hey, what, what's going on down there? I hear all that noise. He said, well, Moses says, not because of the battle. They're not in a fight or anything. They're not worshiping. And he knew what was going on. 3,000 souls lost their, lost their 3,000 people were lost that day. Amen. They went in and out and killed them. Amen. Because, and I, my thought all about that is that the mixed multitude that came up with them out of Egypt might have some effect on, on them people. You know what I mean? Because they weren't really true worshipers. Amen. But God, amen, has some true worshipers, thank God. And I thought here, you know, in, in St. Luke, well, 
the 19th chapter in St. Luke, amen, and uh, the 33rd verse. And when, well, let's go to the 24th verse. It says, and when Jesus saw that the, he was very, when he, Jesus, and when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they that uh, have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it's easy for a camel. Well, praise the Lord. My Bible is new here. Through a needle of eye, then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they and they that heard it said, Who then shall who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, I, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in the present time and in this world to come everlasting life. Amen. And I thought, you know, here he, uh, these folks said, well, I, we left all, follow you. And here Jesus said, talking about a rich man not being able to go into heaven because he trusts in his riches. I thought about the rich young ruler that come to Jesus and said, what must I do to be saved? And he told him about the Ten Commandments. And he said, well, I've done all these. He said, but you like something. Sometimes we like something. You know what I mean? Sometimes... We don't give it all to Jesus. Thank God. Amen. Excuse me, man. I'm trying to find something here. I want to read this again here in St. Luke. Amen. And they said, uh, the Lord had needed him, and they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Amen. And uh, Zechariah, I think it's the ninth chapter, talks about Jesus entering into Jerusalem, and they worshiped him. Amen. They said, blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. So Jesus said uh, he, he, he's seeking to save those which are lost. He wants us, amen, to call upon him. Thank God. When David, amen, uh, had a desire to worship God, and I thought, you know, all the things that he'd done and written and worshiped God, God honored him, kept his hand upon him. And same way with us. As long as we honor God and do his things, he'll... He'll keep his hand upon us. I mean, he'll watch over us. I mean, he will give us, amen, the desires of our heart. Thank God. I want to read here in Psalms again. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 96 says, Sing unto, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day, to declare his glory among the heathens, his wonder among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nation are idols, but Jesus made the heavens. Honor and majesty before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O you kindred of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering. Come into his courts, amen. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathens that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established and shall not be moved. He shall judge the people with, uh, with righteousness, amen. He said, sing unto the Lord. Thank God. I want you to know we are to sing and to worship him. Because he's worthy. Oh, thank God. 
I like this next psalm. It says 95. It says, Oh, come let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the God of our salvation, the rock of our salvation. I thought, you know, like I said earlier, if we would come to church with one thing on our mind, to worship the Lord, amen. You know, get in your, we used to, amen, we used to come to church, and maybe we'd have a, a good old time, and nowadays we've got too much distraction, amen. You know, too much uh, things on our mind. We got, uh, like we got these cell phones and that. I got a granddaughter that lives with that stupid thing. That's all she does. She's got a little baby, but she, I mean, she, I don't know how she, who in the world does she text as much? It seems like almost all day and all night, seven days a week. Her mom and them gets on her about it. You know what I mean? And, uh, and so then they come to church, and a lot of times I've seen people in church, amen, with their computers on. When they ask them to turn, I'm not their computer, their cell phone. Oh, amen. And it has effect on your worship. It has effect, amen, on how you live for God. When you see all that things going on, amen. Oh, hallelujah. It said, oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Now, I'll show you how I read this at home. Oh, come, let us sing unto Jesus. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For Jesus is a great God and a great king above all God. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his. His also. The sea is his. And he made it. And his hands form the dry land. Oh, come. Oh, hallelujah. How good that is. Thank God. Come and worship the Lord. Because he's done great and mighty things. Thank God. And I thought, you know, uh, um, when Zacharias, uh, Zacchaeus brother, when he was climbing up in the sycamore tree because he was a short little old man, he wanted to see the Lord. Amen. Jesus is coming by. Amen. I think about that song just crossed my mind. There's a healer in the house today. He's coming down that dusty road. Amen. And then he wants to save us. He wants to heal our broken heart. He wants to heal, amen, our suffering. Thank God. I thought about this, uh, this child that this grandmother brings to church, and I didn't know it till that night that that child might be blind. blind. I thought, oh, God, you can heal that child. You can open up those blinds because he has in the word of God. Amen. When this guy, blind man Bar Bar Bartimaeus, amen, cried out to Jesus, he took time out for him. Amen. He had these, all these people around him. Amen. Making all kinds of noise. But he heard somebody hollering for him. It's like us. Amen. When we cry out to Jesus, thank God he'll come. Amen. And he will hear, answer our prayers. He will deliver us. Thank God. Amen. Brother Travis, I'm done for the day. Amen. I thank God. I'm glad, amen, that I had the opportunity to worship him in spirit and truth. I'm thankful I didn't have to come out of anything else. I was in this all my life. Amen. So I've been blessed. God has blessed me. Amen. So I'm thankful, amen, for this opportunity that he allowed me to have to worship him someday if I endure to the end the Bible said he that endures to the end the same shall be saved amen brother Travis thank you brother Lloyd you know he talked near the end there he started talking about Zacchaeus I was reading about Zacchaeus last night and how he wanted to see Jesus you know kind of feel like Zacchaeus today you know little amongst all the people but I want to see Jesus amen. no matter what happens and I want to do whatever it takes to see Jesus amen Zacchaeus fought through the crowd then he climbed up a tree and when Jesus came by he called him by name he said Zacchaeus today I'm gonna to abide at thy house amen he knew exactly where he needed to be he was on his way to Jerusalem to fulfill his final act. Amen. He was headed to Calvary. 
Amen. But he had to make room and stop one more time and say, Hey, Zacchaeus, I saw someone's heart who was ready. Amen. And I stopped on by. You know, today we've got uh, some time before the children come down and we enter into the next phase of service. But I want to know, have we done all we can do? Amen. To make sure we see Jesus. Amen. Have we pushed through the crowds and pushed all the stuff aside and all the things aside and the people aside, whatever would hold us back? And we climbed a little bit higher so his face that we could see. Amen. Have we done what we can do to make sure we see Jesus and that he can call us by name? Amen. I want to see Jesus today. How about you? Amen. Let's spend a few moments here in prayer and ask God to have his way in our lives and say, Lord, whatever I can do, whatever I can do, I will do it. Amen. You ask me to go here. You ask me to do this. You ask me to do that. Whatever the case might be, I will obey your word because I want to see your face today. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we come before you yet again, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace, O oh God, that has been bestowed upon us today, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for the word, O oh God, that has gone forth in this place today, O oh God. Lord, help it find a lodging place in our hearts, O oh God. Lord, help us, O oh God, be merciful, O oh God. Lord, help us be gracious as you've been gracious and merciful to us, O oh God. Lord, help us, O oh God, Lord, extend our hand to fellowship to our brother and our sister, O oh God. Lord, help us make sure everything's right between us, O oh God. Lord, help us reach the lost, O oh God. Lord, help us, whatever it is that you need, us to do, oh God, Lord, speak to our hearts, oh God, Lord, bless us and touch us, oh God, Lord, as we seek to climb higher, to be closer to you, oh God, Lord, to see your face one day, oh God, Lord, when the eastern sky splits, oh God, Lord, we long to see you, oh God, Lord, we know, oh God, Lord, you're soon coming, oh Lord Jesus, your return is so near, oh God. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to be in this place today, oh God. Lord, to make things right with you, oh God. Lord, to get closer to you, oh Lord. God, to grow in you, to learn of you, oh God. Lord, we ask of you, God. Bind us together in love and in unity, oh God, in charity, oh God, Lord. Help us reach others, oh God, Lord. Help us reach those that are in the house, oh God. And help us reach those that are outside the house, oh God. Lord, help us, oh God, Lord. Strengthen one another, oh God. Lord, as the days get darker, oh God, Lord, help us be the light that you've called us to be, oh God. Lord, let your light shine through us, oh God, Lord. Let us be a lighthouse, oh God, to let your light shine, oh God, to lead those to safe harbor, oh God. Lord, we ask you, be merciful, be in this place today. How we pick me up and turn me around. How we place my